Assalamu alaikum family. It's your brother Ben X. I want to do this podcast. Um, and the podcast is called Are You Tired of Being Broke? There's a lot of people right now that would like to make more money, that would like to be in a better position, and you feel like you are at rock bottom. And you may be asking, what do I do, brother Ben, if I have no money? What do I do, brother Ben, if I don't have any skill? What do I do, brother Ben, if all I was depending on was my job and I have potentially been laid off from my job? Do you have anything for people like us? So in this video or this podcast, I want to break down for you guys how you guys can make some more money. Uh, but I also want to talk about something at the end that I'm going to be offering for free that can help you all uh, get your first digital product. So in this, we're going to be discussing uh, Alex Hermosi's video, helping people. And then I'm going to step in and kind of talk about my journey uh, as well, because uh, there's a lot of. There's a lot of times where people see somebody and they making a lot of money now, but many people don't know what it took to get there. And there's a lot of context behind a lot of people that make money online. There's a lot of context behind people that got big brands. There was a lot of uh, time that was put in. There was a lot of consistent uh, execution put in. So I want to kind of give you guys that today. So let's first go over to the video we're going to watch. Check this out. Uh oh, wait, let me make sure I got my uh, sound together. All right, tag a friend or family member who you know may need this because this is going to be a powerful, action based, very practical podcast today. We're going to be doing a little commentary on Alex Homozi's video, and I'm going to be sharing with you guys some of my journey as well. Vontae, the young man who was working two jobs with a one-year-old who's struggling and said he was sick and tired of being poor and didn't know how to get out. I didn't have time to answer you when I was walking, but I wanted to take this minute to give you a longer answer. I'll read you the tweet. Maybe we'll put it up on the screen. To Vontae, the young man who stopped me at the grocery store working two jobs with a one-year-old who asked advice on how to get ahead. I gave you a short answer because I was in a rush and it ate at me. So if you follow me here, maybe you'll read this. What you're going through is tough. Being so young and already having to support a child is not easy, but you'll have the opportunity to become an amazing inspiration in a way I never could. Your success story will become your sermon. That being said, onto the advice. You're gonna need to assume that luck isn't real or that it applies to everyone else but you because the only way you're gonna get out of your surroundings is by having something of value that other people want. And right now, the only thing you have is your time with low skills to trade, which is a hard game to play. You have to trade a lot of it only to get a little. So your main objective is to have the time to learn a skill while providing for your family. That means... I wanna stop it right there. Many may not have the money but you got the time right now you may be still living with your parents you may be living with someone maybe you don't have enough money to uh afford to live on your own but if you got time back then i put a lot of time in studying i used to crash at my computer uh and what i mean by that is i used to be studying so much editing so much watching so many videos that i will fall asleep doing it Many of us say, I don't have a skill. I don't have that knowledge. And it's simply because we have not put in the time to go study that knowledge. Having knowledge and wisdom is something that we control. You got control over how many podcasts you watch. You got control over how many videos and how many books you read. So start to change your actions of acquiring knowledge and acquiring skills because ultimately, skills pay the bills in the short term your family may have to suffer scratch that your family will suffer but better now when they're too young to remember it than when they're too old to forget again not forever but for now so these are the things you're going to have to do and this isn't dabble stuff this is wake the fuck up because if you don't you're going to blink and be 30 and in the same spot but worse number one cut all costs and i mean all costs you don't eat out anymore for anything and if you're hungry you deal with it if it's not from a discount grocery store you don't buy it clothing Ha. What you've got is everything you need for the next two years, period. I want to start right there as well. And I, I like this video, man, because it gives so much context. I don't know how many of y'all been following me or how long you've been following me, but uh, I, I wore the same clothes for nearly five plus years. All of the clothes that I wore and y'all see me coming up was literally hoodies and sweats. And I still wear it today, as y'all see. You know, I'm, I'm always got hoodies in sweats on and my shoe size have not grown since college. So all of the shoes that I had, I never bought another pair of shoes until maybe 2022. Uh, 
any other shoes that I got, somebody else bought them for me as a gift or something like that. But I didn't purchase my own shoes until 2022. I don't have anybody to impress, look good for, especially when I know I'm not there yet. So jewelry and clothes and shoes. Listen, if you ain't got it, keep what you already have. Get it out the mud. And remember, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, don't let your outgo exceed your income or else your upkeep will be your downfall. I'm going to say that one more time. I want y'all to I want y'all to see me. The honorable minister Louis Farrakhan said, "Don't let your outgo, which means what you put now, your expense, that liability, exceed your income or else your upkeep of that. Many of us got to pay car notes, many of us got to pay mortgages, many of us got to pay notes and stuff that we really can't afford or else your upkeep will be your downfall. Live within your means right now. Learn how to get a budget right now. I want you guys to Google the word economize right now because that's going to be very important as you're building what you're trying to build. No exceptions. Reuse, trade, or go to Goodwill. You go to work, you go home, and home is ideally with your family. And when I say family, your folks. And if you don't have folks who have got you've got room or a couch or a basement that you can stay at, the worst case is with another family also trying to make it and save. So it's six of you, eight of you, ten of you in one spot, all splitting it, all of you contributing. And it's I'm going to stop right there. And again, I'm going to keep stopping this video for context, for context, for context. How many of y'all know my song, Boom? We used to stay in one room. Almighty God made room. Well, that's a that's a song that I made uh, based on the condition that I was in. We was living in a family member's home, all four of uh, the family members in one room, doing podcasts in the car. I was doing podcasts, you know, just outside everywhere because I didn't want to disturb, you know, anybody in the house. So that was a part of the process. Many of y'all seen me doing my podcast late at nighttime with a camera that had night mo a uh, night vision on it just so it can capture me at nighttime. So you might have to get with somebody who is, you're around your age, uh, maybe get with three other people where you guys can, all four can split the rent or split the mortgage, however you want to do it. But you may not be in a position to have your own home right now, rent your own home right now. You may have to split it with others. It's going to be as cheap as you possibly can. Number two, increase your income. You're working two jobs. Your free time, I want you to spend applying to other jobs closer to what you want to do. He said he didn't like either of the things that he was doing at that time. So any at-home phone sales job has starter roles that require zero experience to pay 40000 a year or more. Do that and work your other job in between. If you can't, drive Uber. If you don't have a car, save up until you do. Number three, the easiest thing to sell is someone else's stuff. So start there. Then learn how to buy stuff for cheap and then flip it. All right, let's stop right there. I want to delve into that just a little bit. Um, those are the first two things that I did before you see digital real estate. Many people see, oh, digital real estate. Oh, they made a lot of money with courses. Oh, a lot of people bought in. Well, let me create one. Many people are skipping the process. I see people all the time come out with their own product, come out with their own course, and not, not, they're not getting as many sales as they expect because they are copying and doing what they see on the outside surface level, but they're missing the behind the scenes context. The context is my first product that I was selling was not my product. I was an affiliate. I was uh, an affiliate for the black business school because the black business school had someone who already had credibility in the financial game. Now I'm just selling his product. So I'm building my brand about helping people, uplifting people, but the product was not mine. Why? I was in a position. I didn't have the knowledge to know how to organize a course. I didn't have the brand power, the authority yet to be able to say, hey, sign up for my course. So you may need to get in somebody else's course right now, learn, grow, and then tell somebody else about how you're growing, document your process, and you get that 30% from a referral or from your affiliate link. He also talked about uh, being the middleman, flipping other people's products. Drop shipping is what I did in college to make ends meet. What I would actually do is find pots and pans that was on Walmart.com or something like that uh, low, and then I would upsell it. Right now, Craigslist has literally, if you go to your local Craigslist website, there's a free section. If you go to the free section, people are giving away uh, uh, entertainment centers, TVs, couches, tables, 
dining room sets, things of that nature. Why? They may be moving or they may not need it anymore. Well, you can get a U-Haul or if you already got a truck, you can go pick that stuff, uh, stuff up for free and resell it on Facebook Marketplace, resell it maybe on Amazon, resell it on OfferUp. These are all different ways to make money. Uh, I also, at the time, I never, you know, flipped a deal because I, it was too much for me. Uh, I didn't have the patience to sit in and wait. But they got something called wholesale real estate, where you literally can find a buyer, find an investor, and flip the assignment fee. So you would get a distressed home under contract and then flip that contract to an investor that would like to get it at that wholesale price, fix it up, and then flip it. So you don't have to put any money per se into that. You're the middleman. So in the beginning, it's not about my product, my product, my product. Yes, I know you want to get there, but let your brand build up into that time where now I'm the authority and people will want to buy from you. Right now, you need to become the middleman. Find something that you can buy low or get low and sell high. The bigger the thing, the more you make. You go from flipping carts to furniture to home, and the limit never really stops from there on. Final note, I could hear the stress in your voice when you were talking to me about your situation. It sounded like you didn't know what to do. Sadness comes from a lack of options. It's a feeling of hopelessness. But whenever you feel that, I want you to think, this is ignorance, not sadness. It means I don't know enough, and that I can control. You asked me to come work for free, but I have no need for low-skilled labor. But I do have a need for high-skilled beasts. It's why I make the books and the courses and the content everywhere for free. So use those. Then get yourself a high-paying job. And every day apply for higher-paying ones. I recommend sales to start. Then once you get in there, for the love of God, work until your fingers bleed because you have no other option. You have no luck. Nothing is going to work out for you. You're not going to catch a break. You're going to have to make it happen. You're going to have to force it. You've got to become undeniable. And the best news is, is that you can do that in less than a year. So that's my advice. Number one, cut all your costs, everything. Number two, work more to make more and apply to better jobs and then learn to sell. Three, start selling more expensive stuff and then eventually sell your own. The game is just trading up over and over and over again. You're just a few trades away from a very different financial situation. So Avante, I wanted to add on top of that, you're in a tough spot. And I think some of the words I probably just said to you might have, hopefully hit home somewhere. But one of the hard things that you got going on right now is like when I saw you, you were wearing relatively nice clothes. And uh, I wasn't gonna like bash you on it when I saw you, but I wanna take the opportunity to say like, you know better. You know what I mean? Like, you know that like, if you're struggling with money, that that's the last thing that you should spend money on, right? And um, I think one of the difficulties, especially when you're younger, is you've got your friends, you got your family, and especially if they're all poor, then they have terrible views around money. They might not approve of all the stuff you're learning on the internet and trying to try these new things out. And, and the real real is like, you're gonna fail a lot. And they're gonna see say, see, told you so. And the tough part is, is they're gonna be right most of the time. Except it's one of those things where it's 99% right, but 100% wrong. Is that anybody who bets against you for this thing being the thing is usually gonna be right. It's just like a parent who says, you're gonna break up with this person, you're gonna break up with this person, you're gonna break up with this person. But they're right with every single person you ever date, except for the person you marry. And then they're 100% wrong. And if you have the perspective of listening to that, it can be incredibly disheartening. And so number one is, I want you to go on a, on a different information diet. So you need to be able to ignore all the stuff that they're giving you because like the best way to stay poor is to listen to poor people about how to get rich. You're already taking great steps by like watching content, doing this stuff, just keep doing more of that. And I'm sure your girl who you know you have your baby with that's your world like anybody who doesn't who's not trying to build avante 2.0 with you doesn't deserve your time because like right now you have a wallet of money and you got a wallet of minutes and like every single person you're choosing to pay minutes to or pay dollars to has to earn their keep and earning their keep in this season of your life is them helping you get to where you want to go now i don't know what you're making in your job i'm just going to assume the extreme scenario of you're making minimum wage at both jobs and you're working 80 hours doing that i get it and i respect the hustle which is why i'm making this video you need to get more for your time. And right now, the extra time on top of that 80 is you sleeping and probably spending time with your kid. And what I'm gonna say, people in your surroundings will say like, that guy's extreme or that guy, he's, he's not balanced. And the answer is yes, I am extreme and I am unbalanced. For the season that you're in, I think you should be too. Because the thing is, it's like, if you don't take action on this, five years is gonna go by and nothing's gonna change because you're not gonna get ahead. Like you need to get your head firmly above water because you probably barely feel like you can keep your head above surface, right? That's where all that stress is coming from. And you don't know what to do. So to get the water 
broader or lower, you've got to lower your time budget and your money budget. And I want to go really extreme with you. And I'm not telling you to do anything I didn't do. All right. I owned my car in cash, which I think was a five or $6,000 car. And I slept in a room with another dude in a house that had six other people in it. And we all split it. So I wasn't in a terrible neighborhood. I just paid $400 a month in a nice neighborhood because I didn't have my own place. And so I had to split my kitchen and I had to deal with the fact that three of them had dogs and were shit and piss everywhere all the time. It sucked. But you know what would have sucked more? Not being able to have the money to buy the courses and the seminars and the workshops that I was able to attend with the extra that I saved so I could learn my next skills. And so right now, food and shelter is the only thing you spend money on and you're going to drop everything else. And you're going to drop those expenses to the greatest degree possible. And either your girl is working. If she's working, then you can have childcare. If she's not working to take care of the kid, then you need to say, listen, sweetie, like I got to do this for us right now. And so like you're putting your sacrifice in, which is you're sacrificing your career so we can, you can be with the kid. I need to sacrifice the kid right now so I can have the career so that together as a family we're balanced rather than the individual. So there's two levels of balance I want you to think about. One is the macro, which is like you can be balanced over your lifespan. When you're retired, you'll have more time. You can go to Europe. You can do whatever the other stuff is, right? And also you can be balanced in a family unit. Your wife might spend more time with the kid than she does in her career, but you're going to spend more time in your career than you do with the kid for now. Cut out the people who are taking your time. Easy way to see this is like if the people in your life don't have bigger dreams for you than you do, ignore all of their advice. Let's just ignore them entirely. And I know that that's simple to say and hard to do, but you're in a hard situation. And I think the question is whether you can be harder than your circumstances right now. And you have to be to get out of this. Luck has already dealt you a shit hand. Let's assume he's never going to give you the right hand. You're never going to get lucky, but you still need to win. And so now it's like, how do I do that? If you have a car, you can have more flexible hours if you drive Uber. That's something that I recommend for a lot of people. If you don't have a car, you need to save up as fast as you can to get one. Buy one in cash, negotiate, try and get yourself five to $10,000 car in cash. So you don't have payments. You just have the insurance, which because it's a cheap car will be less. The remainder of your time, and you gotta tell your lady this, is like, I'm gonna be spending four hours a day, every day, watching these videos, and this isn't me doom scrolling on YouTube. I need you to pick one skill that you wanna have and only consume stuff about that. I'm gonna start right there. As you're listening to this, I want y'all to think, what do I have to give up? Is it, that bag of weed that you may get every week? Is it drinking? Is it clubbing? Is it consuming every gossip story on social media? So as we are thinking about something to gain, Uh, we have to think about what do we have to remove. Many of us are consuming TV. Many of us are consuming, you know, too many of the wrong podcasts. There's a sacrifice that has to take place. Even when you think about when Jesus said, one of the first things Jesus said you have to do is deny yourself. He said, deny yourself, then follow me. Pick up your cross and follow me. But you got, there's something I have to deny because if I desire something more than I desire my success or my growth, I'm probably not going to get there at the speed or the time period that I want to get there. And I want us to do this. Those of us who are broke, we want to get to the next level. Look at our life. I want you to start writing down at the end of each day everything that you did to get you closer to your dream. So if your dream is $5,000 a month, if your dream is $3,000 a month, at the end of every day in this season that you're in, I want you to write down everything that you did that's going to get me to my goal. And if we can look back off times each day for the last 30, 60, 90 days, we didn't do anything consistently that moves us closer to that goal. And if we did, maybe we did some, but it was inconsistent. We didn't do it every single day. And I think that would be what the difference would be. 
This is my one thing I'll let you buy. It's a timer you can buy for five bucks, not your phone. And you set the timer and you set it for those four hours a day. And every time you look away, you stop the timer. You do four hours of real work of studying the skill. After you've done enough of that work and you're like, well, what's enough? 20 hours? Like you're like, oh, I could do that soon. Yeah, I know. So I'm telling you, you can get out of this fast. You can switch those four hours of you learning the basics of that skill to spending the rest of your time being the most amazing applicant to new jobs that exist in the world. I didn't say go apply to jobs. I said, be the best candidate that has ever applied and you're like I don't have experience and you can address that like what I don't have an experience I will make up for and hustle and you prove that by messaging multiple people at every company with a snippet personalized to each of them you know what other people do like they take a half step they copy and paste the same thing to all four people and you know what the four people do yeah yeah he copy and pasted the same message to me don't do that be personal look at the HR recruiter look at the head of talent look at director of whatever and message each of them on LinkedIn if you don't have a LinkedIn go get one it's free and when you submit your resume, put a personalized cover letter on it after reading from the website what that business is about. When you read the job description, good job descriptions say what they want the person to do and say like, I will be able to help do this thing because of these things, right? And especially a lower level role, your resume is not going to matter as much. Don't let anybody around you say that or fool you into that. What will matter, especially for low level roles is hustle. So every employer wants to see is somebody who's going to go out of their way to go above and beyond. And so you demonstrate that you're going to go above and beyond. And guess what's going to happen? You're going to do this for five different places. And you're going to write a custom thing. It's going to take you four hours to do the research, write the custom thing, message 20 people because it's going to be four people at all five places, you know what's gonna happen? Nothing, because you're not lucky. So what are you gonna have to do? Gotta be undeniable. Do you think if you applied to a thousand places like that over the next six months, you wouldn't get a job? I think you would. Do you think if like after you got off your shift, you drove over and you said, hey, I just wanna let you know, not in a creepy way, you say, hey, just wanna let you know, I applied to put my resume, I messaged a couple of you guys, I just wanna let you know I'm really excited about the opportunity, don't wanna be overbearing, but if you guys would give me a shot, I promise I will work harder than any other candidate here. And I'd like to just show you that I'm demonstrating that by these things. So you're like, I have proof that I'm saying, I'm not just making this up, I have proof that I will work harder. And you know what'll happen? One of them say, I'll give you a shot. And then when they give you that shot, shove it in everyone's face how hard you work. Not by what you say, but by what you do. Be silent and just kill. Look at what the top guy does and do twice as much as that guy does. Something that I would like to add. The copy and paste is totally true. If you copy and paste the same thing to everybody, it's going to be overly noticeable that that's what you did. If you want to get people to open the email and open the DM, it has to be personal. They have to see that you actually watch my page. It's kind of like when you're on Facebook and they tag and you tag 99 people and you expect all 99 people to look in the beginning. They may look because they think they're the, the post is actually about them. But after a while, when you continue to tag 99 people, we stop looking similar to Instagram. People got away with the mention you on Instagram. So they thought, or you thought they was talking about you on the live. So you'll click on it maybe the first two times because you're thinking that it's mentioning you, like he mentioned you or she's mentioning you. But after you find out that's just a, that's just a tactic, a marketing tactic to get you to open up the video, next time you see it, you're not going to answer. So I will make it as personal as possible, and I will lead with a result versus an idea. If you are a video editor, Versus copying and pasting to all of the influencers saying, hey, can I watch or can I edit your videos? It wouldn't kill you to make maybe two or three videos editing, showing them your editing skills and then sending that to them. Now they got something that they could go off of because if they don't know what they don't know, uh, they don't know if you're good or not. They don't want to waste their money either. So if you put a video in there, hey, check out this Google Drive. I made a video of that last live you just did. Hopefully this will save you time putting content out there to promote this live. Now they say, whoa, that was very valuable. And you're showing in your mindset that you are proactive versus reactive. It'll make it easier for you to be hired. Be Kobe for whatever the job is. If you don't know the whole story about Kobe, he did three practices a day while everyone else did one or two because he wanted to get ahead. And in the beginning, he was worse than them. And then he got as good as them. And then he became better than them. And he kept doing three practices a day until eventually no one could catch up. Because if they were doing three practices a day, they would just keep up with his rate of progress. But he got ahead. And so the guy who's number one at whatever that business is probably works better than you and he works longer than you. And so you can't just match him to get ahead because he'll always be ahead. You got to match his current effort and then do your, I'm going to get ahead 
value effort. Like when he clocks out is when your work clocks in. That's when Avante 2.0 clocks in. And the thing is, it's like if you can adopt this, like if you can really internalize this, you're gonna crush. You're gonna win. You can make luck not a factor. When I had Jacob, my 19 year old, my son, I'm kidding. When I was talking to him, he was, I think he was 16 actually. I was 15 or 16 when I started talking about this. Imagine, he's even less reason to get a job than you, all right? Less experience. I gave him three words and he said he still remembers them this day. I said, volume negates luck. If you need to put it, put it on the back of your phones as a reminder to yourself. Because in the beginning, the volume you're gonna do is the timer of you watching the videos and taking the notes and watching the videos, taking, learning the lingo, learning the language so that when you get into an interview, you know what to say. And then reps is gonna be watching mock interviews on YouTube, watching people who are hiring experts talk about the best ways to present. Watch some of Layla's videos about how to interview correctly. You do that stuff, you'll put yourself ahead of other people. Volume, okay, cool. Now you're like, okay, but I'm not getting interviews. Volume negates luck. Crank the timer, start doing the reps, one a day, two a day, three a day, four a day, five a day, six a day, 10 a day, every single day. You're like, wait, that's 40 messages that are personalized and 10 cover letters. Yep, that'll probably take about four hours. And then what do you do tomorrow? Set the timer, you do it again. Next day, you set the timer, you do it again. What do you do the next day? You set the timer, you do it a fucking again. And you keep doing it. And on the ones that you really, really like, you drive over there after you get off your shift, you stop by and just say, hey, I'm Avante. I'm really excited about the opportunity. I think I can help. I applied. You got a couple messages from me. I promise I'm not a weirdo. I just did it because I wanted to stick out from the rest of the pile. Because I know you guys, I'm sure, for an opportunity as good as this, you probably got a lot of people who are interested. I just will promise you that I just want a shot. You say that, they will give you the interview. And if they don't, someone will. And once you do get that job and you work harder than everyone else, you turn the dial and you don't do it for a week. You don't work harder than everyone else for a week. You don't work harder than them for a month. You don't work harder than them for six months. You work harder than the top guy for a year, for two years. And you're like, well, shit, dude. I'm already like two or three years from now. Yeah, I said it was a season. But on the other side of this season is everything else that you want. And so if I said, Avante, in 36 months, are you willing to give me 36 months to get yourself out of the feeling that you have right now? You're like, I'm sick and tired of being poor. I'm sick of not being able to buy the stuff for my girl that I want. I'm sick of not being able to provide for my kid. I want him to be in a good zip code. I want him to be able to have a good school. I want him to be able to have these things. There's a price tag on that. The question is just whether or not you're willing to pay it. If you're willing to pay it, crank the dial and volume will negate luck, but you can't re rely on luck. You can rely on volume because that I promise you, independent of race, color, socioeconomic background, you're like, wait, some race or socioeconomic backgrounds or how someone appears uh, gives them an advantage. Sure. But if you do it a million times, does it give an advantage? Because you only need one, yes. If there's like a lesson I can like have you like etch into your brain is that there's a significant amount of money and opportunity that sits on the other side of being willing to be rejected by a stranger. If you get rejected a thousand times, you are no worse off than you are right now. In fact, you're better. Why? Because you have a thousand times experience. And so you either learn or you win, which means in both cases, by doing, you win by default. I'll give you a little analogy. So let's say you and your buddy are thinking about asking a girl to prom. It'll make sense in a second. And your buddy's like, ah, man, I want to ask Nicole. And you're like, all right, man, why don't you go ask her? It's like, ah, what if she says no? He's like, well, then you're in the exact same position you are now, which is you have no prom date. You will also have no prom date, but you'll have experience of asking one girl. What happens when you talk to the next girl? You'll probably be a little less nervous and you'll probably realize that you'll survive. You will live if you hear a no. And if you ask a hundred girls, do you think one of them will say yes to your prom date? Probably. And in that situation, what are you now? Better off than you were before you asked. The moral of the story there is that you lose nothing from no. You only stand something to gain from yeses. And one yes can change your entire life. And so if you're willing to be rejected and see the rejections as you learning, meaning you win, and see the yeses as you also winning, then you can't lose. And everybody else around you who's poor is going to convince you otherwise. They're going to be like, why are you still doing this? Man, stop bothering those people. And you're never going to get the job. And you need to readjust your expectations. Set your goals lower. Hey, that stuff's not for us, right? They're going to tell you those things. Because the thing is, is that you have something that I do not have and that many people won't have, is that you have a hard fucking beginning. You have a harder and bigger monster to slay. But the bigger the monster, the more epic the hero. And so these are the stories that you're gonna someday tell. And these are gonna be the sermons that you're gonna be able to give to other Avantes in the future. If you can't even muster the willingness to fail for yourself, be willing to fail for your kid, for the story that you're gonna tell them. And be willing to fail for the hundred other, a thousand other Avantes that you'll be able to someday tell your story to so they can get out of their situation. So. I didn't have time to say that, but hopefully I give you a couple more minutes that give you a little more context. I think I can speak. So I want you guys to think about what's one thing from the video that stood out to you that you're going to execute on. There was a lot of practical steps in that, how to reach out to people, how to study, uh, the mindset to have when going out to get a job, how many jobs should you be applying for, what to do after you submit an application for the job, what to do with the cover letter, uh, when you submit a job, what to put in the 
uh, application. So there's a lot that was there. And those are all practical steps, not just fluff and mindset. That was a lot of practical steps for you all to go change your life. Now, the question that you have to think about is, am I patient enough? And am I going to put the execution in place to make it happen? Because it's almost a nearly a guaranteed method. I did it. <laughs> Unknowingly, I did it. As I watched this video the other day, I said, whoa, those are all things that I did. You know, when you don't think about it when you're in the moment, but hindsight is 2020. Hindsight, when I look back, I say, man, I did the drop shipping. I did the middleman. I did the affiliate. I went uh, years without buying new clothes. I went years without listening to music, listening only to podcasts and lectures. What will be your blueprint? What is something from this video that you're going to adapt to make your life better? Because as he said, it does only take that one yes, one partnership. One piece of advice, one tweak in your business could really change everything. One program, one good idea could change everything. But many of us just aren't doing it consistent enough. Every single day applying one step forward closer to our goals and our dreams. So I want you all to comment below. What's one thing that you're going to adopt from this video to take you to the next level? See you guys next time. Peace.